two, one, and we're live. Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. We've got a special video, special guest hero tonight. Uh, Darkhawk is joining us. And, Hello. Uh, <laughs> he uh, was lucky enough to get Mage of the Mirror before me, which I'm a little jealous of, but hey, it's all cool. And I know we did uh, we did get um, some really cool photos from Steve RS2000 showing us pretty much everything in there. But it is really cool to have a live video. So thanks for volunteering to do this unboxing with us here. Yeah, no problem. You want to say anything to kind of introduce yourself there, Darkhawk? Um, I am just a, a pair of disembodied hands and, uh, you know, hopefully... Hopefully, I look. Uh, I make hero, this uh, Hero Quest expansion look well or good. Nice. And you've you've played with us before on uh, Hero Quest fans Twitch stream. Which was I think cool. I've, yeah, um, I think two or three times. Yeah. So you're always welcome back, of course. Uh, got plenty of characters yeah. to go around, and you're a big uh, Star Wars guy too. So uh, I saw a pretty pretty sweet stream that you did that one time. Uh, Retro DH for Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. Yes, yes. Uh, I was uh, started playing through that, um, though my attention span gets a bit off, so I, I jump and play some other games as well. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I, sh I probably will play some this weekend. Nice. Well, uh, I if my plans uh, pan out, I'm going to be visiting family this weekend, but one of these times I would like to play you and... Uh, it's been a long time, I gotta yes. say. He and I used to play back in the day. Back in the day. You were the one that showed me the game, actually. Was, yeah. and then you you quickly surpassed me and uh, would mop the floor with me every time. <laughs> and then no one would play with me. And now, if I try to play people that like have been playing for years, I have no chance at all. So, we'd both kind of be starting again. Yes. Anyway, so we're here to talk about Mage of the Mirror, Hero Quest. So maybe tell us a little bit about how you got into Hero Quest, or maybe how you got back into it. Just kind of get people up to speed. So I, I, rem I vaguely remember Hero Quest originally um, when it, when the original version was out, but I never played it. But I remember seeing the, the the logo and the the yeah. cover for the box, um, and then I was aware of it just generally as a very um sought after an expensive board game um the original yeah and then i don't follow kickstarter at all um another friend of mine um told me um hey i just got this new game ca that came in that i kickstarted like i think a year or two back um do you want to come over and play and it was the the new avalon hill hero quest and so i, I played with him and um another guy and had a blast playing it and thought, oh man, this is like the one thing on Kickstarter. I've never done backed anything on Kickstarter, but I was like, this is the one thing that I wish I would have backed because I wish I had this game. Mm -hmm. And so this was in, when did that Kickstarter come out? In November or was it October of last year? Yeah, it was like, well, it was October to November of 2020 when it started. Uh, and it released in 2021. And in like, actually it October, wasn't... I think. Yeah, it wasn't officially Kickstarter, but it was the same kind of deal because yep. Hasbro has Hasbro Pulse fundraiser. Okay, sorry, I'm using the wrong term. Yeah, yeah. But the, but that's what everyone calls it because it's the same kind of thing. It's like you, it's a crowdfunded. There you go, crowdfunded yes. project, and it's like if they don't meet their goal, it doesn't get made. But so you were one of the millions of, I assume, millions of uh, people that were interested in it that might have gone for it if you'd had a chance, but you had to wait for the retail version. Well, I mean, in retrospect, I would say, yeah, I would have backed it, but probably not just due to the cost. And I probably would have been like, you know, I'm not going to pay that much for a 150 a, a board game, um, especially one that I had never played before. Yeah, sight unseen. I, I had a lot of fun playing it at my friends and um, cool. thought that it would be. Like I said, I was wishing that I had it because I was like, oh, man, this would be great to play with uh, other friends and family. And um Heck yeah i did some googling and saw that um hey there was rumors of a retail release and yep. i think the retail release happened maybe in november it was announced basically i ordered it off of uh hasbro's website um and it came like just in time for christmas uh in 2021 i think well, it showed up like 
December twenty third, maybe. Oh, that's great. Because yeah, I don't. I didn't know the exact times. Because yeah, I was able to pledge. I got the mythic tier and all that, and that was in November. And I want to say the first person I heard getting it was like December. Maybe the yeah, it was like it was right before Christmas, just in time. Um, I didn't know if it was going to make it, um, and as soon as then I got it from uh, Hasbro, like the the base set. Then I saw that Amazon carried like the expansions, yeah. and so I, I basically bought all the expansions Dang. on Amazon, um, mm -hmm. and got those throughout 2022. So this year, yeah. um, and then I. I didn't on Amazon. This didn't say pre-order; it just said order. Um, and on December first, I put in my order um, for Mage the Mirror. Um, after hearing about it, actually on uh, your Discord server, because um, I'm I'm not like following it super closely, and I saw people talking about that. Oh yeah, this was going to be released in 2023, and I mm -hmm. went to Amazon, found the product listing for it. There was an order button, not a pre-order, which is odd. Usually it's pre-order. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just ordered it and it gave me an estimate of like mid January. And every week that date has been pushed up until finally um, this week it got pushed up saying it was going to actually be delivered tomorrow. Uh, but lo and behold, it shows up on my doorstep today. Nice. Well, and, and it seems like even earlier in the day, because I was thinking like, you and I were going to talk tomorrow and we we're going to try to swing something with my weird schedule. And, but here it is. So yeah, great. Well, yeah, I mean, and I, I don't know how Avalon Hill feels about their product being released so early. I mean, something similar happened with the frozen horror. It was supposed to come out. Oh, like August 1st, but then it came out like some where people were getting it in July and posting unboxings. And so they were just like, okay, fine. It's out. <laughs> So it's like they officially I, I, announced it when people had it in their hands. <laughs> I mean, I have to imagine that um, they're the ones who ship this product to Amazon. Right. Um, and I'm, I don't know how the logistics work of of, uh, of shipping things through Amazon, but I imagine that you pay for the, the warehouse space at Amazon uh, maybe on a daily rate or something like that. So if they wanted it to be held until the release date, um, they probably have to, I'm guessing, pay for that cost as opposed to if they just ship it to Amazon and then just let it go out from there. Um, then they don't have to pay that. I'm just totally speculating. I have no idea how that works yeah. with the logistics, but. Well, and I just wonder because Strange Bus, I mean, he's worked for GameStop and I remember their big thing was like, you know, they get a release date and even if they have it behind the shelf, they can't get, they can't sell it before that. But I just wonder if, yeah, what are these retailers doing, these online retailers? But who knows? I guess from I mean, the fan Amazon, point of I, view, I, it's I, like great to have it early if you can. Yeah, I, I bought video games from Amazon before too, and they'll, um, or, or books even years ago. And, you know, on release date, they would um, deliver them so that it arrives at your house on release date. So they obviously had them in their warehouses sometime before then and had staged it. Mm -hmm. um, my guess though is that it costs money to, stage your item for a release date and you're paying, you know, for that. And maybe, it maybe Hasbro or Avalon Hill doesn't want to pay for that and just lets it go out immediately. It might be a cost saving measure and not yeah. just to screw up. Yeah. yeah. Well, that makes a little more sense because you think like, okay, it happens once and then they're like, okay, don't do that. And then just, you wouldn't see it happen like twice in a row. Yeah. Cause some of these other places like Kapow toys, people in the UK were getting it like quite early. And in the past, we've had like Big Bad Toy Store and places like that have maybe had it slightly before the official date. But my guess is for things like like video games, you know, the release date is a lot more important because um, everything needs to be timed with your marketing and your uh, reviews. But board games are not as that doesn't seem as important. So if a board game gets released early, like. I can't imagine that's a big deal because there's not like a, hundreds of websites that are reviewing the board game, you know, yeah. you know, all embargoed on a certain marketing date. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, be a small I'm just speculating here. Well, and I suppose it's different than something like Warhammer, where from what I understand, a lot of their releases are like limited edition and stuff. And so like, yeah, it's out and then it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and some people are going to be pissed if they don't have an opportunity to get it. 
Um, cause then you have scalpers and all that. And that was a problem that Hasbro was facing with the, um, the mythic release. Um, so these are all retail products. So hopefully that shouldn't happen. Well, I think we've talked enough, but it's great to have you here. It's great to have you sharing. So go ahead. Um, take it away. <laughs> Sure. Well, tell me what you want to see too. So, uh, this is how it came to me. It was not this is not shrink wrapped. I was kind of surprised. Usually, oh, you know, shrink wrapped this time. No stuff was shrink wrapped. Uh, there's this. Uh, I don't remember that the other expansions had this, but there's this like. Um, it's sealed with this additional piece of. Do you see the additional piece of like uh, cardboard here? Yeah, it's a little like half or quarter sleeve or something. Yeah, that was. Yeah, my, yeah, exactly. So it's the Rogar Velathorn had something like that, but that was a really small box. Okay. Oh, you're right. You're right. That one does have that like that. But yeah, this one's a big one. Um, so about so the it's frozen horror size. Yep. So it's here's the. So that way you can have it. alternate artwork. Yeah, you've probably already seen all the photos, so you probably don't need to see all the sides here, but. Um, I should check the chat just this... to see if anybody is asking questions. They probably won't, but so welcome to Owenella and Anthanaz, who just subbed or followed. I should say, not subbed. Subbed would be cool too, but I appreciate the follows. That gives you more gold there's coins this... too. There's just a sticker back here that I'm going to cut. All right. Carefully as possible blade you know with the arterial spray to go that way <laughs> off camera safety first yeah if you had like a titanium gauntlet to put on before you there we go so this flap just comes up here rip oh there goes the resale value and then okay so this was a the entire box actually was this piece Oh, there's nothing on the other side. No secret message from the Cabal, no, no the Ravenclaw, or whatever it was. Wait, what, no what was that text? Flip, flip it, flip it. There's like some text on the edge. Um, this one? Yeah. We cannot get out. They are coming. No. What does it say? <laughs> oh, all right. Courageous elf must complete a special set of challenges to rescue the princess and save the realm from peril. Well, that doesn't sound cliched at all. No. But it's true. And is it the okay. same, same text on the other side? So on this side, it just says Major Mirror Quest Pack. Okay. Still, it's a little something. So if you're uh, one of those collectors, you're like, okay, is it wrapped in the original cardboard? The original uh, outer sleeve. And I assume that's the same, like, kind of. Um, quasi linen finish on the box there yeah the texture yep yeah sinestra i don't know if you're familiar with the um the old mage of the mirror from 92 but um that's i think it's like starts at 600 dollars on ebay up to like a couple thousand if it's still sealed but sinestra is like an old crone <laughs> she definitely doesn't look like that no I, I know nothing about the uh yeah. the old original sets and i'm not i'm not that much of a uh, knowledgeable on that stuff so that's okay well and the thing is a lot of most hero quest fans don't know about this stuff i mean they know it existed but they didn't get to play it back then because it was just like in stores and it was gone and they were like destroying copies so that's part of the reason why it's so rare and a lot of people like rather than having nostalgia for it in my opinion it's that curiosity it's that longing it's like oh man if only I'd ordered it back then, because you you get a little flyer inside. I think Keller's Keep and Return of the Witch Lord saying Elf Quest Pack, Barbarian Quest Pack, you know, and it's like, and then you send your order in and it's like out of stock. It's like no, this is no longer in production. No, so people got these rejection letters, and you can find those on eBay too. You know, a little typewritten letter from uh, Milton Bradley saying sorry. So, uh, but then you open it up and you're like, oh man, this was designed to like totally kill me and crush my spirit but they made some changes <laughs> so yeah take it away i don't mean to no no you're fine you ready to see inside all right yeah let's see it's gonna be like like the glitter bomb explodes or something it's like it's not really oh there it is 
Oh, this is just the companion app uh, yep. advertisement. It's like they put the wrong QR code and it actually takes you to some like the Rick roll. Website. Yeah. So here's our first, uh, what are these called? The where you punch these cards out for the yep. official name, please. That's for the ASMR. That's the tile, tile sheet. Tile sheet with a, uh, looks like the elf. Yep. So yeah, and this one, spoilerific spoilers, you, uh, yeah, there's the princess and the key and everything. The moon silver, which they've changed to Lenarian. <laughs> they changed there's, the name. Are those, I'm guessing those are werewolves. Hell yeah. Yeah, you get to turn into werewolves and you drop your gear and move around. The uh, the gear ones, that's a separate tile though, isn't it? Does it fold out? The gear one. See, okay, so move that back. So see, um, by your left hand, I think, there's like piles of gear. Oh yeah, and there's skulls on the other side. So it's like... Skull. Skulls and then I don't see the gears though. Flip, flip it over. Uh, piles of equipment, like backpacks. Yes, these things. Yeah. That's like a bow. So that's a bow and arrow. Uh, yeah. Okay. I a get dagger it. and a shield. And so if you get turned hat. into a werewolf, it's like you drop a pile of all your equipment right there. That's what that represents. And then you move the werewolf tile around. Gotcha. Because you're naked. Yep. But not afraid. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> and again, it's got that linen finish. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's made in China. <laughs> they put those yeah. giant labels. I guess yeah, did, make... they have to, did they have to put the giant label on the actual? Uh... Can they put it just like on an edge or something? Well, it'd be nice if it didn't even if it was on the part that you're going to get rid of. Yeah. You know? yeah. So they just want to make sure that if somebody sells a bootleg of it, that they wouldn't bother to copy the copyright yeah. notice. I don't know. So there's the. Uh... Yeah, the mirrors, the mirrors, and the bow and arrow, and yeah, it's kind of interesting. They brought the the slotted, like you've got the little door base, and then you slot the cardboard into it because that's how the old doors were. Um, it looks good though. Is that tissue paper on top? It is tissue paper to protect the Mage of the Mirror quest book. You might need that tissue paper if you're uh, overcome with emotion when you open this. It's interesting that they did that. Yeah. That was definitely I don't not. remember the other sets having that, but the original tissue paper. So here's the. They probably the had some left over when they were doing the Rogue of Elethorn because they had those little tissue <laughs> bags. Yeah, I'm so glad that the male elf is back and it he isn't just the same generic sculpture, but they actually gave him like a full new design. Yep. It's quite a bit. Uh... It's pretty thick book. Let me see. There's hand stitched. Too. Thirty-seven pages. Yeah. So that's all ten adventures. So you, are you the uh, Zargon of your household, or do you use the companion app? No, I'm I'm, I'm Zargon in my household. Heck yeah. Where my uh, not that I care that much, but the corner of this was folded. Okay, so it's got. Oh yeah, people were mentioning one of the swords pokes into it. Oh, uh, I don't. Uh, so oh. yeah, tissue paper wasn't enough. No, it wasn't enough. That's all right. It's not a big video. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so here's the part that everybody wants. Some people buy these games just for the miniatures, like they just throw everything away and then they use these to play some other game. Or they just paint them because they like to paint. What do you think? What do I think of the miniatures? Yeah, what's your opinion? Um, I I think they look. I, I've always actually been pretty pleased with the miniatures. I think uh, someone else in your Discord had a, or maybe it was you who had a comparison of the old versus the new. I think with the furniture. Um, yeah, that was and, someone else's that I reposted. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think that. And was uh, it like. It looks way better than the original, so. But I like the I mean, the, the detail. These are the bookcases. So you got kind of an ornate, kind of weavy, wavy, like vines growing on it, carved like elven style. It's like they're yeah. the same. But I mean, 
you know, you got two bookcases, so you can paint those book covers different colors if you want. Or whatever. I don't. Looks what like they're pretty thing? easy to get out of the plastic this time. Yeah, oh, at least the furniture is. Yeah. I'm guessing these hold some sort of like wow. stand. Wow, that looks, that looks so much like the old door base from 1990. It's like the same design. <laughs> is this for like the mirror or something like that? Yeah, or? yeah. Flip it over on the bottom. On the bottom of this? Or at the bottom of that base. Yeah, the other side. Or just show me what it looks like on the very bottom. Okay, it's flat. Yeah, that's the only thing that's different, but not that it matters. <laughs> It's just kind of interesting to see in it. You don't like seeing designs coming back, but it's like kind of a hard, like slightly bendy plastic, like a What's hard rubber. Two? I don't know what kind of plastic it is. It doesn't yeah. bend at all. It's pretty hard. Pretty hard, yeah. So you could put a little piece of aluminum foil for that mirror if you wanted. Yeah, somebody mentioned, uh, I think when the Mythic tier came out, they said, oh, this reminds me of the furniture from Descent. But I've never played Descent, so I don't know. Is that a game you're familiar with? You've never played the original Descent? Nope. I remember the Descent PC game, but I don't remember the board game. Oh, I thought that's what you're talking about. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but come on. Descent 3, everybody knew that game. That yeah, my, my knowledge of board games is not that strong. Yeah. I have a much better knowledge of PC games. So uh, you've got the... I think it's interesting that you've got the mirrored versions of the swordsman and the archers. So it's like you got the right-handed, left-handed, male, female. Um, the original game uh, only had two of each, but now you've got double. So I guess for variety's sake. Wait, are two of these supposed to be males and two of these supposed to be females? Yep. I know, it's it's hard to tell with the elves, but... it is. I was going to say it's kind of hard know. to tell with the elves. <laughs> they know. Let's see here. Oh, okay. I can. T okay. And if you have, I don't know if you have the Frozen Horror handy, but what I gathered is these are maybe a little bit more greenish than the Frozen Horror ones, which are a little more blue. Obviously, it may depend on the monitor and the lighting, but. Uh, yeah, I don't have that handy. Those uh, those swordsmen. We were just discovering that on the back they have like a shield, like hanging on their cloak. Oh, yes, they do. Sweet. And we're thinking that's going to lead to lots of debates of people saying, well, can I just hang a shield on my back and be like a turtle and I can just like turn when I get hit? And that, like, like, no, that's cheating. <laughs> the shield is either in your hand and it counts or it's stowed and it does nothing. Hey, we got some chatters. Uh, let me respond to this. Looks cool. Okay, first time chatter, Nito V01. Want to offer promotion of your channel? Well, I'm going to tell this person some things that I probably shouldn't say in public. Or I'll just ban him. Yeah, we keep getting these people uh, trying to sell crap. Like, oh, you can cheat and become famous. It's like, no, we're going to earn it. Okay, so that's Sinestra, the Elven Archmage. That's the final bad bad guy. Wow, there's one other thing. Okay. Oh, did you show the hero elf yet? The red? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. And then Major Asnable. Oh, yeah, welcome back. So this is Mage of the Mirror, the Elf Quest Pack remake. Just came out. Well, it's it hasn't come out yet officially, That's but people are getting it early. So we got Darkhawk showing off his copy. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. So that's that's the elf that they put on the cover in 1992, but there was no figure of him. But now there hmm. is. Because if you look on the cover, you'll notice it's a different elf. It's the female elf with her like plate armor, and she's holding the same weapons. <laughs> but the original female elf from 92, I didn't think she looked that good. She just kind of looked like she was going to butter some bread or cut an apple. She didn't look like she was going into combat. So, Major Asnable says, I almost bought one called Keller or something. It had so many miniatures. Yeah, Keller's Keep Keller's is the Keep. one Yeah, that has the green skins, as they say. The orcs and goblins and abominations. And then Return of the Witch Lord is the one with the undead. It's all the white figures and zombies and mummies and skeletons. 
I would say of the two, Return of the Witch Lord is personally my favorite, like story-wise and everything, but if you just want more miniatures, it's an easy way to do it. You're like 35. Okay, the Elven Archer. If you want, you could maybe hold those up a little closer to the camera. You could just to kind of see. And they've got the linen finish. These are the poker size. Yes. Got kind of a tackiness to them. They're not super smooth. I mean, they're smooth. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> I mean, the way they feel in your hand. Same as the other ones. Yep. Monster designs. Those giant Jeez. wolves. Six, six attack dice. That's Yeah. I've only played the first quest, and this is a hard, very hard pack. This guy also has six. Yeah. It's not quite as bad as... I mean, the Frozen Horror was broken. I mean, you had the Yeti monster that could kill you. Just and There was nothing much you could do. If you took any damage, you were dead. I'm not quite sure about the ogre with the uh, mohawk. <laughs> kind of reminds me. He like reminds me like he should be in like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something. Hey. Yeah, it's a little, little bebop vibe going. Now he was originally oh. ten body points. Malgamash made his thoughts known. I I personally think the five body body points is mostly an improvement, but there are a couple instances where it would be nicer like to have a ten body point ogre as like a boss boss fight yeah now we've seen all these before but um, these are your artifacts you just got the spell scroll you'll notice there's only one so if you have the other packs you've got other spell scrolls you can mix in there's the dread spells formerly known as chaos mirror magic yep that's going to be an interesting one because you can rebound the spell but then if you got the ancient staff, you can rebound it back. So you get this like tennis match of magic that goes on. Can you hold up the reanimation one again? Yeah. yeah. No problem. Thanks. You want to go watch reanimator after this? <laughs> Hand bride reanimator. Yeah. Just want to look good. My clothes on. Okay. Um, yeah, the spell enables the spellcaster to reanimate all defeated skeletons, zombies, or mummies in the same room as the spellcaster. These monsters rise from the floor, all lost body points are stored, and attack the heroes again. We were debating about what they were trying to convey with this card. Because there's one way that we kind of were reading it, which made it seem almost useless. Because every character that has the spell doesn't start in a room with undead. So it's like... They've got to run to the room where they died to like revive them. But then more recently we've been thinking, well, maybe they just meant it like just teleports the defeated monsters into the room. Like that'd be a simple way to read it. Because then it would help the bad guys and be kind of cool without mm. being broken. Because <laughs> you just imagine the bad guy like just running back through the maze trying to find like where did these guys die again? Yeah. Zargon has that kind of leeway. Restore Dread. Formerly known as Restore Chaos. Yeah, you can go ahead. Hope it's okay. I shared your link in someone's Discord. He loves Hero Quest. No, that's cool. Thanks for promoting us. Is your Asnable? Were Werewolf Curse. Airwalk. That should be uh, equipment. Or no treasure. Oh, sure. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Elven Cloak of Passage, so you can use that three times. And that's a treasure, so you can get it every every quest. You could stockpile them even. Treasure Horde. It's always fun. 300 gold, you're going to need every last coin, I would say. Full Spain Potion. Because really, one hero could turn into a werewolf and he could infect all the others. So you're going to need that. Okay, so these are the elf spells. And the criticism some have been labeling is that the elf only gets three of these and they seem kind of weak but I don't know I mean my my thought is by the time you play this pack for all we know you're just going to be like loaded up with weapons and armor so maybe he doesn't need to rely on magic as much maybe he can just kind of have these clever abilities I think there's four Oh, there's more. Oh, you can only pick three? Yeah, only 
basic three. I mean, you could always house rule it and say he gets more, but yeah, three out of a pool of eight, I think. It's seven or eight, I forget. Hypnotic Blaze, yep. Time stop. Yeah, I was reading the draft notes that Luca Pashi had shared in the community, and it was like, originally these were divided up. There was like, I think, time spells, mind spells. I don't know if it was like nature spells, but now they're all just... That's a different there. backing of equipment, isn't it? Um, it's the same image. It's just zoomed in slightly. I think at a certain point they just started zooming in the image, so like you see less of that archway. But yeah, it's equipment. I guess so you can just tell the pack what pack you're in a little easier. But yeah, each of those are the potions you can buy between quests. Eight elf spells. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I kind of homebrewed my elf to say basically he gets the three, but as he levels up, he can like pick an extra one each quest. So it's one way to do it. So do I have to have base game to play an expansion? Yes. Yeah, all of this is designed. They call it a game system because like, wait a minute, what is this a Nintendo? No. <laughs> You buy the game system and then you add the expansions. I mean, yes, you could buy this and just make up your own rules for it, but I mean, there's no board. It wouldn't quite work. Can you show me the bottom of the surfboard that the werewolf is on? Yeah. yeah. Where is it? There's just a slight delay. Yeah, these are the giant wolves. Huh, okay. I wasn't sure what, the, what would be down there. But yeah, the giant wolves take up two spaces so they can crowd you but you can surround him as well. The, uh, the ogres or orcs? I can't remember. Yeah, these are ogres. Ogres, yeah. Now, is that the same gray plastic as, like, the furniture? Or is it a different shade of gray? It's different. It's a darker shade. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I uh, hold on. Hold on. I, hold on. Was... I take that back. No, they're the same. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of boring. I was hoping it is... be, like, dark blue. Yeah, it's the, it's the same. I mean, anymore, it's like gray makes you think unpainted. So now you got to paint the whole thing. But the Chaos Warriors were also gray. The Dread Sorcerers. I think they look pretty cool, but I don't know. I just picture ogres as being like even bigger and scarier. But these guys don't look that. Like I was thinking yeah, I, the uh, Reaper Bone. It looks good, though. Ogres. It looks good. Yeah. That design is like one of the European packs against the Ogre Horde had, it was called, uh, I think it was called, was it the Ogre Chieftain? He had an ax and he had a mohawk. The only thing is, instead of just a regular fist, he had like a spiked gauntlet. That would have been really cool if he had that, but not a bad design. I think this chair looks great. Ah, uh, yes. The Throne of Scone. Not really, but... Oh, that's interesting. It's got some like weaving on the back or something. It's just like the uh, wood, like a like a solid piece of wood. Okay, we're having a little ad here. Yeah. So with uh, let me just 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 take a moment just to ask you something here. So with Hero Quest, I mean, I. I know that you've played some other games in the past, like um, you were into Magic the Gathering, right? A little bit when it first came out, but I decided not to get into it just because I saw that as a money pit. <laughs> and it, it kind of is. And now there's some drama going on with that, I guess, in the world of Hasbro. And is it Wizards of the Coast? Are there Dungeons and Dragons? I don't know. So do you have any other uh, background in like role-playing tabletop gaming? Yeah, I mean, I I did lots of role playing, all sorts of games, D and D, Rifts, Star Wars, uh, Earth Dawn, um, Shadowrun, like um, quite quite a bit of uh, of role playing games. So I kind of got into it late. Um, I really didn't. I mean, I knew about those games, but I really didn't play them. So, but uh, would you say going from that to HeroQuest? 
is it kind of a letdown or is it just it's just a different thing or what's your take it's on it? It's just a different thing. I mean, um, you know, Hero Quest obviously is just combat. Um, it doesn't have any of the, the role playing aspects that that the other games do. Um, it's much more structured, of course. Um, and, and like I said, with D&D, there's rules and stuff, but it's it's not as you, you're not you don't have this like grid, you know, that you're not. I mean, you could, I guess it depends upon. Yeah, your, some people play your, your DM, like but yeah, but yeah, that the. Uh, there's a lot more, I guess, flexibility in, say, like a D&D game where um, or there, there might be a lot more house rules where in Hero Quest, at least that I've played, like it's much more kind of by the book. Um, so like, for instance, like in a combat setting in D&D, my character might decide I'm going to, you know, do a wall run or something or, Sweet. you know, you know, bounce across the room. Um, but like in Hero Quest, that just be, wouldn't be something you would do because you're more funneled into the the rule system of the, the more limited rule system of the game. But with that being said, I still like it. I mean, um, it's it's just a different experience. It's it's much more accessible than than uh, you know D and D or any other type of role playing game. You know, a Hero Quest session will go say for maybe an hour or something like that. Um, whereas any time I played role playing games, it was at least four five hours. So well, it's, it's a lot fun. more. And it's, it's fun a bigger to time. Game. Yeah, that's true. And I've definitely heard the same from other people that play those games as well. Um, of course, I was thinking it's funny because our Hero Quest sessions on Hero Quest fans tend to go longer. Um, part of that I chalk that up to me just being chatty or just waiting for people in the chat to like respond because I try to have that interactivity like people in the chat actually buying like potions and stuff to like influence the game but also it's because we're dealing with like expansion packs which have quests that are much longer much more many more monsters first of all to fight whereas the earlier quests yeah you're absolutely right you can get through those in an hour um or less yeah. if you know what you're doing yeah but i've heard of yeah people playing like uh D for like eight hours which is like access and allies level of like an all day game. Of course, then they say, well, yeah, we just, we screwed around for four hours and then we played, <laughs> you know, for six hours. So I was like, wow. Yeah, I've definitely done that. Yeah. I mean, I guess a person could decide, okay, well, let's just clip everything out and just do four rooms and that'll be the adventure for tonight. Like you wouldn't have to cover every inch of it. And I do try to incorporate a little bit of light role playing into my games like i don't force anybody to do it but i mean i do the uncommon feats so yeah if somebody wanted to do the wall run i just have them roll a die see if they succeeded or not but yeah sure. as far as keeping track of like complex stats or like measuring wind speed and distances what about war games did you ever play like warhammer or any of that stuff where you had to, no like, i did not measure? um that's even more I of a money sink than magic correct correct yeah once i found out uh that that requires uh putting together the models and then painting in the case of warhammer painting the models yeah. um and then the, the space you need to to, to play the game like oh, the, yeah. Build the table, the table. like plywood yeah and stuff. it's yeah. uh it's a lot of time and money and i i uh i just chose not to to do that so i i have a good friend though who's really into it and it looks cool like you know all yeah. of his painted models and stuff and he's oh, yeah. his game board i mean it's it's impressive um i've just got other other hobbies so same here same here well and i i know that uh those game shops which i mean they're still trying to obviously push product but they'll have game spaces so that's one way they kind of get around it say like okay you don't have to build this giant table out of plywood and mold terrain and stuff you can just use their game space sure. but they're probably going to throw you out if you're not going to buy anything <laughs> after a while right. and and you can't you don't have to paint your army but yeah you're gonna get made fun of by the people that put all their yeah I, to it. and actually i guess tabletop simulator um that that uh tabletop simulator yeah that game on steam i know that uh you can play through there and, and then you're just paying for the tabletop simulus yeah simulator and then uh 25 so it, it, it you could you could do it in there um 
but the traditional way do people do it, it is very expensive if you're going to do it uh, right. This chest um, it's like a is pretty cool looking with the yeah, like creature with the tentacles wrapped around it. Yeah. It's like you stick the key in and it's just like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So three, three identical chests. Yep. So, yeah, they gave you these duplicate furniture. And from what I understand, there's no special rules for these. It's just, just an alternate design if you want to use it. But you could create a quest and be like, oh, yeah, there's two alchemist benches in the same room. Why not? Choose wisely, you know? Yes. Oh, yeah, we haven't seen anybody open that uh, tomb up yet. Okay, is it big enough to throw a figure in, or are they still going to stick out? I'm betting they're yeah, still going to stick out. out. They'll stick. It's the... Let me try Wait. the swordsman. Yeah. No, the base, the base will stick out. Slam the lid on top of him. Well, no. the overhead camera, you could maybe have... <laughs> But yeah, that's definitely bigger than the uh, the other tomb. You could add a treasure chest inside it. Oh no, that's even too big. Oh shoot! Now, if you rebase your figures, you could maybe do it. If the bases were removable, which unfortunately they are not. The treasure chest barely big? fits, but it still doesn't close all the way. Yeah. They just need to be deeper. You could maybe take a. Uh, hobby knife and like carve the, you have to carve the plastic like in the bottom somebody's gonna mod it yeah yeah but it's cool that there's just a little little thing there. you could 3d print you could 3d print oh, uh, yeah. or resin print this pretty easily but yeah it's just a big box the uh the original ogres were actually posable their arms and heads moved but these guys do not so there's the wooden exit door when you see that, you're going to be quite happy. It's a sight for sore eyes, and it's made of delicious chocolate as well. Just kidding. And there's the uh, iron door. Yeah, there's just a slight delay. It looks pretty cool. It's like an evil jester. Skull, yeah, he does. Spider. Something. It looks like an evil jester with a beard. <laughs> Which would be a really cool like character as well. Reminds me of the I mean, Jester in um, Gauntlet Legends, Dark Legacy. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> a great he, game. Like, does the little, does the he does the little uh, pirouette and he throws bombs. That's a fun game. I mean, Gauntlet Slayer Edition looks pretty cool too, but Gauntlet Legends. So I, I played and beat Gauntlet Slayer Edition um, co-op. What'd you think? Um, it's it's great except for one thing. Um, the game is zoomed way too far in uh, um, yes. by default. Yeah. Somebody made a mod that hacks the game um, that lets you zoom out. You um, so it's like a field of view hack. Um, and it then feels like a regular gauntlet game. Because you're fighting huge mobs constantly. Yeah. Because when, when you're too zoomed in, you can't see, you know... You can't, you can't. You don't have a good field of view, so you can't see the. You don't know where to run and stuff, or, or move to get away from the monster. Or so, but other than that, once with that with that field of view hack in there, the game was great. And I did think about you when playing the game because I know that uh, years ago, um, you had like some godly level character saved on some arcade machine. Yeah. Um, and then didn't it get like erased or something like that? The machine got unplugged, and you lost your character. I I think so, but man, that was great. <laughs> Up until that yeah. point. <laughs> um, uh, couple, hey, what what goes here? Yeah, did a couple I, people have been asking what that is. Did I? I was like, did I pick something out and forgot to put it back in? No. Is that like a little dice tray? Or one person suggested, oh, when you, once you punch out the tiles, you put them there. But that would only work for the small tiles, I would assume. Oh yeah, you're right. It's probably the tiles. I but mean, you're right. The big the big tiles went for there. But you're right. That's probably the tiles. The cup holder only works if your cup is shaped like that. Like it's got to have a square base to it. Decanter. nothing nothing else in here yeah oh that's for the juice box the kids juice box goes there <laughs> or the rice crispy treat well, i guess you could take the cards out and you could use that well yeah i guess the cards have to go in there okay so no no other secrets in in the box just uh just what you see 
No other secrets in the box. No. So. And those uh, those quests will take you at least ten weeks to complete, possibly more if you're like us, a little bit slow. It might take you a year almost. So there you go. There's Mage of the Mirror. Nice. Well, thanks, Starcock. Yeah, no problem, man. I hope your copy comes in soon. Thanks. This yeah. will uh, this will go sit on my shelf, um, uh, unplayed because I still haven't even got through the other uh, expansions yet. I just picked them up because I thought, why not? Uh, yeah. Adventure who knows if they're going to go to print or anything? So figured I'd grab it when I saw it. Yeah, sounds good. So, uh, so you're playing through the uh, the standard game system adventures with your family there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, How far are you? Not good? very far. Um, probably like, I don't know, a quarter of the way through the main. Yeah, it's a it's a good adventure. I mean, I feel like the game system, every quest gives you a new gimmick or wrinkle. Um, you don't start getting into like big story stuff until I think Return of the Witch Lord. People said Keller's Keep is kind of a mixed bag. I mean, it's a lot of cheap stuff happens to you. It kind of gets you used to just bad things happening. <laughs> and then you've got the real gauntlet, which is Frozen Horror and Mage of the Mirror, which are designed to, to beat up the people that thought the game was too easy up to this point. But yeah, I I, I don't imagine we'll, I'll ever get through... I don't know, maybe someday I'll get through all of it, but we don't play just Hero Quest. We kind of cycle through different games, so... Yeah, well, it's good to have a variety. I mean, yeah. we've kind of dedicated ourselves on HeroQuest fans right now. We do the HeroQuest on Saturday, 6 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time on Twitch. And then we, on Fridays, we have been doing Space Crusade from 2 to 4 or whenever we get tired. Um, now, you were mentioning that HeroQuest is combat-focused, and you're absolutely right about that. But <laughs> Space Crusade is even more combat-focused. So it's like, oh, man, where's all the exploration? I'm just fighting <laughs> But it's a fun game too. Yeah. 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 I I actually would like to play that sometime uh, next time you play. So. Cool. Yeah. Well, and um, one of the guys was showing us how easy it is to use Tabletop Simulator to uh, play that. Eudoxio. He was showing us. So yeah, they got Space Crusade on there. Um, and I think I think Tabletop Simulator is on sale still for the Steam Winter Sale for like okay. ten bucks. I wish I could say there was like promo code HQF, but there isn't. It's not promoted. It's just you get it or, or you don't. And See, again, it's Tabletop Simulator is one of those things like for years I bashed it. I thought this is useless. But when your system can handle it, it's it can be pretty useful. See, Kurgan, you said that wrong. So HeroQuest fans has worked out a deal with Steam. Oh, yes. And Tabletop Simulator is on sale right now, including a whole slew of other games. For the holiday season, courtesy of HeroQuest fans. Ah, <laughs> like, was that a sanctioned ad or not? I can't really tell. <laughs> I'll work on that. Nice. Okay. Well, uh, do you have anything to promote here at the end uh, before we call it a wrap? I, I've got a uh, a fledgling uh, Twitch uh, channel that I occasionally stream retro games i need to stream more i actually i've been playing through actually gabriel knight uh, sins of the fathers i'd never played that before um and stupidly i didn't start streaming that i just started playing it on my own and then i got so far into it that i was like i don't want to go back and replay it and stream it but i wish i would have because it's a great game so far but uh the, i i think i'll play i'm gonna play the second game in that series and i will stream that one sweet Oh, I, sorry, I neglected the chat here. So, Sikashem, great guy, he's been with us a long time. He's mentioning uh, he plays both Hero Quest and Classic Warhammer Quest. Modern iterations of Warhammer Quest as well. They're quite different games. Well, that's something I didn't touch upon. Because you're absolutely right, Sikashem, that Warhammer Quest was kind of like Games Workshop's way of going back to their roots with that. Because they collaborated originally with Milton Bradley Hasbro. To create hero quest as that tabletop introduction in a box game and yeah they had advanced hero quest but hardly anybody bought that but warhammer quest was a big success and that's definitely not the same as like warhammer fantasy warhammer 40k where you're building those giant armies and trying to paint them all it's all in the box 
The problem I had with Warhammer Quest is, well, first of all, the 95 one, I wasn't even thinking about board games at that time. I was all video games, so I missed it. But these Warhammer Quest things keep coming out, and I keep missing it because it's just like, oh, it was limited edition. Oh, it was sold out the first day. I don't know. Have you ever played uh, Warhammer Quest or Darkhawk? I have not. I've never even heard of it. Like I said, I'm not like a big... I'm, I like board games, but I'm like a, I'm not a huge board game. Uh, well, they can be expensive, uh, too. I mean, you, you think about a, a lot of these board games, it's like $100 is pretty typical. Like the small games are 50 Standard games are like 100 And then you get like these specialty limited edition or Kickstarter games. They're like 200 bucks, And like right. that's really pushing it. But whereas you could just buy a PC game for like 50 or 60 get the same amount of hours of enjoyment out of it. It's like, which one would you choose? And then there's a yeah. lot of development time. And of course, with a lot of video games going to the uh, microtransactions and crap, making people angry, maybe they'll more people will jump into the board game game. Yeah, there, there, there certainly has been a, I think, I feel like a board game uh, renaissance in the last uh, several years. So, yeah. And I mean, with the pandemic, that probably helped a little bit. Just a lot of people just kind of sitting around. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I did go to a couple game shops over uh, Christmas break, and I was actually seeing a lot of these games that I'd heard about and, like, never seen in the store. It's like, oh, here's where they've been sitting. So, like, the, not that Warhammer Quest, but, like, one of the later ones. And uh, so it's definitely out there. But when it comes to price-wise, I think Hero Quest is definitely more affordable than most of those because those go up yeah. in price, like, really quick. And, I mean, honestly... Uh... So I paid whatever the retail is on this on Amazon or 95 or whatever. Yeah. Um, but Amazon has been uh, discounting every single one of these expansions um, a couple months after release. So I could have just waited yeah. and picked it up, I'm sure, for 20, 30 percent cheaper. So. so you go on HeroQuest fans on Twitch and you play it for free with me. And then when it goes on sale, then you get it. That's true. You know what, though? Actually, when... Um, when I play with you, um, I still get my Japan my app. yeah my no not the app. I get the whole set out so I can have the cards in front of me. Uh, um, yeah, it just helps to have like something physical, you know. Oh to, yeah, well to keep track of my stuff. So I don't begrudge anybody that does that. In fact, that's originally how we started playing. Like I Kareth and I did that. Um, I did it with my brother, my sister. Like we did. We actually everybody had their own set. The only problem with that is it's like you're trying to coordinate so it's like am i over here i'm over here so sometimes it takes a little longer to do that but i guess you could just have one person with tabletop simulator and everybody like coordinates their board to that one because it's really easy to see high contrast but yeah definitely having the dice having the cards if you've got it bring it yeah all right man well i'm glad to be able to unbox this um and go through this with you that was pretty awesome. Yeah, when I do mine, there really won't be much to do, but now we know what's in the box and we can see it in full motion video there. Yeah. Yep. So cool. thanks everybody who joined us. I know we didn't promote this stream. I mean, I wasn't thinking we were going to stream at all until January, but we will be back. And so that first week, so the week of New Year's, we will not be streaming. Um, but the following week, uh, we've got some stuff planned for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So cool and uh you've seen dark forces uh the force engine too right of course yeah yeah i i just uh downloaded the 1.0 release and and played through uh a few levels um, with it it's it's a fantastic engine and i cannot wait until um the author uh, updates it for outlaws yeah lucius uh he did dark xl and then he basically scrapped it and started over and i think yeah his basically recreated or yeah, he created like his own game engine essentially, but he uses the assets from Dark Forces, recreates the whole game, and I've played significant portions of it. I'm like, yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, and Outlaws, that's definitely going to be a game changer. We're going to have to do some multiplayer. Um, yes, yeah. that's nope. that's one of my favorite games of all time. No cream, no Gatling gun. Just telling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe the first time, just just to go crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, it was a pleasure. Right. Thanks for joining us in HeroQuest fans. Thanks, Darkhawk, for the unboxing, and we'll catch you later. Everybody Thanks. have a great, happy new year. All right.
Oh, and I suppose, is there anybody to raid? Nah, nobody's online. That's okay. All right, everybody take care. Bye. Bye.